Greetings. Shalom. We're here to discuss a very important topic, the topic of the scattered tribes of Israel, who are among the Cherokee. Uh, it's been well documented among the uh, different Cherokee and the different clans, the DNA. These things have been well documented and discovered. What we're about to discover now is the finer details that make up the tribes, the characteristics of these tribes, uh, nature involved, scripture. And now we will look at a picture of Swimmer, as you saw in the background. Swimmer it was called Swimmer. He liked to swim, possibly. One of the greatest things that went with Swimmer was the stories that were not written down. That's the tragedy. One of the greatest things that was written down was the many formulas. And this man is wearing a turban, as you can see, very characteristic of the Middle East, the Far East. Without, uh, this is most important to re remind you that uh, the feathers were not uh, worn as much as people think. And now we'll go to another detail of the tribes, starting with the four. The four living creatures in the four directions. As you see on the left, with his hands in the air, the cat of Yah, the line of El. This possibly could be the tribe of Judah. And the hands in the air, very much, very much that. Praise Yah is, you, is Judah, is what Judah means. Joseph in the center there, representing the south. And he's a small potato clan. When I discovered this, it gave new light on the whole subject. Whether the artist intended or not, he revealed a great deal. And as we see here, Yosef, Joseph, is calmly sitting there, like peaceful as he his characteristics are. And the point about the wild potato that brings about the mystery is that Joseph, in his representation, as we'll see in the future, is a bull and a calf in the four living creatures, the legs of a calf. In this case, he represents the characteristics of Yosef himself, not just his tribe uh, characteristics, but a fruitful vine over the wall. When I read that, it came together. That is why we, can, we could not uh, suggest where the wild potato would fit in the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, to recap on what people may not know, the twelve tribes of Israel were scattered, and the seven clans of the Cherokee are the remnants of that in that of this part of the land, and the other five went north. But here we're seeing an ancient understanding of the four basic tribes of Israel and the four basic clans. In the fact that the, the four directions and the four main tribes that make up Israel. As we talked about these two, the south and in the east, there, there are uh, the main tribe and the two tribes are connected to each one. And then here we have the bird clan, which resembles Dan, the tribe of Dan in the north, and the bird clan 
is very characteristic in that they live in the north, and Dan eventually lived in the north. Another characteristic is hand in the air as a messenger. The four living creatures was a, uh, an eagle, calf, a lion, and a man. And here we have Reuben. A representation of the West. And here it's the paint clan. Reuben in the West. It's a wonderful example of the four basic main tribes, the leaders among the, uh, among the twelve, and quite probably the Cherokee. And in this detail it was overlooked because from the Tower of Babel, the influence of Nimrod and the corruption that he had placed there went underground. And they had to assume a secrecy in their worship of these creatures that were only given as an example to represent the Creator in His many characteristics of the Creator. And here we have, in like manner, with with the Ark of the Covenant in the center, as if this was Israel. Ariah, the lion, man. Here it's in the south. And Yosef is on the west. And you have Dan in the north. picture tells a lot. It's very important to bring this about because it's, it's a foundational point in the whole subject that we're presenting. The details overlooked and the discoveries are many. Thanks to the elders and thanks to the Scotch Irishmen, the Irishmen come to discover these things about the Cherokee they have discovered much, and it's our duty <clears throat> to rethink it, show improvements, corrections, and also appreciate what they had done. And in this, Kwandiyahu, one of the authors of one of the greatest books about the Cherokee, Mooney, in that book he had said that this word is of an uncertain etymology. And I'm here to say that in my discovery of etymology, that this is truly not hidden any longer. But the enemy, the Kwanda, even a cobra is called a Kwanda Iaho. This is Kwanda Yahoo showing an ancient description of this, the spitting serpent, just like a dragon, just like Draco, Greek. There's a Greek Draco. And here are the, the stars of the constellation in that part of the uh, where the constellation surrounded. A testimony of the plan of redemption told among the stars. This is clear that before the scriptures, the oral word of what he would do was told. Many other nations have done that, have, are aware of these things. Uh, it's a fascinating study, I recommend that. But we will uh, continue with the etymology and later we will return to the 